right, now I need to start thinking about how do I measure the 144 megahertz with the Arduino. The Arduino is not fast enough to do that, and uh, I don't know how accurate it needs to be either. So um, uh, I need to I need to figure out what to do. So there is a uh, library in the Arduino that you can download. It's called uh, FREQ count. So freak frequency count for it's freak free R E it's only four four letters, so it's freak freak count. And uh, so I've I've put that in here as a as a demonstration. Let me, uh, let me hook up the some voltage to it. Let's see if I can get it to go. There we go. So what I have here is I have a, a Arduino Nano. I have an oscillator, something to measure. This is just something to measure. It's 1.8432 megahertz, okay? And I've added it to the firmware that I have in my radio. So there's a bunch of other things in here, the DAC control for the VCO and stuff. And I, you know, it's trying to output 144 uh, kilohertz and it's doing some weird things in there. But anyway, the number that I've added on at the very end is, um, the frequency that's being measured. So I said it was 1843, and we have 1843, um, and it's 432, and I have 430, so it's off a little bit. Um, now, the accuracy of this counter is going to be the um, oscillator of the actual microcontroller. So, and the, and the loop, I don't know what kind of quantization error and stuff there will be in, in the, in the, in the loop. There is a 16 bit counter inside of the, um, the, the, the part, the 328, uh, 328. Yeah. The, the Atmel part has a, has a counter and, and you have to use pin five. So it comes into pin five. That's an external clock. It runs it into a 16-bit counter and interrogates it every once in a while. And if it, if it, over a certain period of time and a certain number counts, it it calculates what frequency that is, and and that's how the the uh, the subroutine works. So uh, this certainly works just fine, and I can put in a calibration factor in the firmware and then calibrate the system and make it accurate. Now, I don't know about temperature drift and things like that, but we certainly can dial it in at, at room temperature and, and that'll be a good thing. So I uh, hope, that, hope that all makes sense. Now, the Arduino is only operating at a certain speed. I think it's a 16 megahertz crystal. And the counter and everything makes it such that just native, it can count up to about six megahertz. It can do about six megahertz. I don't know what, at what accuracy, but they say the top end is six megahertz. So we're going to have to uh, divide down our 144 megahertz down below six megahertz to make this all work. So we need something called a prescaler. All right. So a prescaler is in a counter, uh, the very, very first division. So whatever frequency comes into the counter needs to be divided by something. And then it finally goes into the rest of the circuitry. And it's usually a specialized chip. Um, you, you, they make different types of prescalers for different frequency ranges and stuff. And, um, should be able to find one. And I looked around and the one that I found, uh, let's see here. Let me, let me show you the one that I found that was dirt cheap these days <laughs> is, uh, is this one. It's an SAB 6458. And this data sheet dates back to 1986. So you can find a lot of surplus parts and stuff. These were used in televisions. They were used in the phase lock loop section of television. So they were made in huge quantities and now they're not anymore. And so these parts are just all over the place. I think I paid a buck and a half to get one of these parts. It's on order. I don't have it yet, uh, but I thought I'd show it to you. Oh, it's a, it's a prescaler. It either divides by 64 or divides by 256. Okay. And so either one of those is, is, is good. The 144 megahertz will be divided by 64 or to be divided by 256. And, and that will put it into the range that we're interested in. So this part will do good. This part is usable up to a gigahertz though. So it's great. So if you want to build a standalone uh, frequency counter, uh, this is a great way to do it. Um, and it gives you the ability to measure frequencies all up to one gigahertz. So if you don't have a frequency counter, 
then get yourself an Arduino at a dollar and a half part and make yourself a frequency counter. So that's what uh, the next series of videos will be in, you know, how do you build a one gigahertz, you know, uh, frequency counter. So you can look around and you can find a lot of ideas of pe what people have done before. So here's one. This is a, a, a one gigahertz counter and it uses that chip I just talked about. And here's the whole Here's the whole schematic. There's a five volt regulator. Everything runs on five volts. Uh, the, the input comes in. It, it's diode clamp to, to limit the uh, amount. The very maximum uh, voltage into this part, I think, is 300 millivolts. So you have to be careful not to overdrive it. So that's what these clamping diodes do. And then uh, it, it certainly uh, divides it down, but I'm not sure exactly what the, what the clock looks like, what the, what the edges of the clock look like when they come out. So obviously they're not exactly right to go right into a microcontroller. So this is a microcontroller in a display. So that's just, that's just easy stuff over here. So what they did was they AC coupled the output into a, uh, a 3904 transistor or something just to clean it up, just to make it into a clean edge. So. Uh, that's interesting. Now, I looked at other circuits, so I found this one. Uh, this one also looks very familiar. It has the diode clamping. It uses a, it uses a part. It also has one of these cleanup uh, transistors. This one's a 2N2222, and um, it actually has an adjustable uh, pull-up on the... Uh, on the base of the... So this is probably like a sensitivity. So. Um, that might be a sensitive adjustment. The other one just used a fixed 39K resistor, and this one has a 10K and a 2.2K um, in, um, in series, but they're also tying it back down to ground. So they're, they're, they're biasing this thing at a particular point. So this might be a, a, a different way to do it. I'll look to see which works better for, for my application. And then this one just runs into a bunch of other, uh, other counters. All right, and then another schematic that I found was this one. And again, exactly the same. They just have the uh, diodes going in and the output of this one uh, also goes into a, uh, a cleanup uh, transistor. And this one doesn't use uh, the potentiometer. It's, it's like the first one. Um, it has a little bit uh, harder pull up on the uh, on the base though this is just a 4.7k the other one used to 37k so again we'll have to figure that out uh, this one also has a bit of a of a load uh, resistor on the output um, the other ones just brought it straight out so anyway a lot of people have used these parts just a little bit different from one another but they're all very 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 similar so we should be able to get something up and running wait for the parts to come in the mail and we'll be ready to go um, now, the part may be busy doing frequency counting, and I don't know if that will get into the way of turning the front knob or doing other things, whether they'll all have, um, it'll be quick enough. The, the, the frequency count might, uh, take up too much of the microprocessor's time. If it does, then I have a backup plan, which is to add a second uh, Arduino and have that one just do the frequency counting and then connect it to this Arduino via I2C. So I can have this Arduino as a master I2C and the other one as a slave I2C and just treat it like a, an I2C frequency counter. Um, so that'd be kind of cool. So we might do that as well.